I don't want to have to be immortal and vegan. I'd like to pick one or the other, please. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs>。Hey, welcome to Three Guys in a Pie. I'm Gary with my co-host Jonathan. Hello. And our guest again, Aaron. Still here. Yeah. Um, today we talk about、um, death and immortality. And、uh, slight、um, disclaimer slash spoiler warning: we talk a lot about Soma the game. So if you don't like games spoiled for you,、uh, you might want to go and play or watch it first. And、uh, we also do get into like some pretty heavy topics、uh, involving death and like you know possibly mortgaging your life. So、um, yeah, there was definitely some things that we were thinking through as we were speaking, and it is worth listening through to the end. We sound a little crazy at first, but we kind of. Figure out what we,、uh, how what we're we, actually talking what we're about. Actually talking about I'm、right、always、here. willing to play devil's advocate. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So today we're gonna talk. We're, we're gonna be. We're gonna get a little bit back onto schedule here. We're gonna talk about death and immortality, which is something Jonathan has very strong feelings about. I wouldn't say strong feelings. It's something I've thought a lot about. Okay, well then, why don't we open up with you talking about what you've thought about as far as immortality goes? I believe it's a very real possibility that our generation is the first generation that will be genetically immortal. And what do you define as genetically immortal? You,、uh, an, an end to senescence, a new dawn,、okay. the dawn of a new era for civilization. All right, so box McGee. So. <laughs> An easier way to state that is people aren't dying of old age. Yeah, and they aren't dying of conditions related to senescence. So I, like, I forget the name, like、um, heart disease, degenerative diseases too. Okay, so like can be cancer. With, no, cancer is a different cancer. Because that's a genetic mutation. I don't think ca- cancer is not tied to senescence. No, no, it's a genetic、know. mutation. Yeah, that, that, that so, stems from a mutation. The way I, that, I bet cancer would be mitigated with an end to senescence because it's a, a failure to copy properly, which can be caused. By is it not related though? Because usually you're either going to die or live long and like die of something unrelated to cancer, or you're going to live long enough to get cancer and die from it. Yes.、Huh? Yeah, so more, if anything, more people will have cancer. It's the same relative <laughs> principle. So the glorious because... Don he's talking about is everyone just <laughs> getting cancer? No,、um, <laughs> but the the idea stems kind of from cancer. You're essentially doing what cancer cells do, except for you're getting rid of the unchecked reproduction portion. Whereas the cancer cells and proper cells... proper cloning. Correct. Because another、yeah. thing with cancer is yes, the cells replicate at an alarming rate, but like they don't work. Yeah,、mm-hmm. so this essentially cancer cells have discovered an end to senescence, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but it's doing that in a more controlled way. So I, maybe it is possible that we could eliminate cancer with that. That that's not something and, that I've looked at too de- in depth. But and isn't that like kind of the whole shtick with the I am legend? I forget. Do they find the cure for the common cold by using cancer cells, or do they find the cure to cancer using the common cold? And one thing leads to another in the world of zombies.、Uh, I'm pretty、like、sure、that. I am legend is there's some sort of sickness or disease that basically kills people, but they're. Dead, but they're actually. It's more like an, actually, no, it's not zombie. It's a vampire. That in was the book. It's a that vampire. That was、oh. the original. That was the original where it was it was called Omega Man, and it was. I haven't read the book, but the original I Am Legend movie, which was called Omega Man, a star Charlton Heston, fantastic movie. I love it. <laughs> yeah, in the movie I Am Legend, though, it's. I'm pretty sure it's the cure, cure for, for the disease. Yeah, the cure for cancer was,、yeah. that causes the, the disease. Yeah. And it's like, well, because yeah, because it was the cure for cancer, and they use the common cold, and that's what makes it so infectious. Because this cure was based off of a virus, it became a new, absolutely terrible virus that turns people into monsters, whether they were zombies or weird vamp, goddamn vampires again.、Um, <laughs> Yeah, they kind of were like vampires, where they couldn't be out during the day. Like, yeah, de- like, definitely some vampire themes. Yeah, there was. Well, yeah, because like it's a it's a cult of vampires in Omega Man too. Like they're they're sentient. Like they can talk and do things in at least. Yeah, because it's based、Hester、off、movie. the book I Am Legend. Yeah, which is like a more. Did like you a read the book? Yeah, I got it at a Second of Charles at some point for like a dollar. I might have to、mm. borrow that from. Yeah, it sounds interesting. It was definitely interesting,、mm, but um. <laughs> 
Yes, yes, I like to read. I, so I, I do too. Yeah, An I end is in essence. So you're talking more about getting rid of the deterioration with old age. So stopping yes. things like arthritis. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, degenerative. Being disease. able to maintain whatever, say arteries and nerves and stuff. Yeah, because essentially, they're, like the the. the He's Human for... lifespan is limited by how long you can continue to reproduce cells that are accurate reproductions of those cells. So you're in essence looking for the cure to old age. Yes. In a way. That, well, okay. well, no, well, yes. No, that's it, one yes, of the three not. components. And okay. end of senescence, a better understanding of some cells, and I, I don't know if the third part is an end to dis- like finding an end to diseases or if there's a third component. But it's medical technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it really comes down to CRISPR technology for a, for a lot of it when you're talking about genetic altering. Edi- uh, editing well, for, the like, genome. genetic defects and things like that? or the, well, Yeah, a lot. Because the way I see it is, like, so even if you're not aging, right, say, like, we still eat unhealthy diets and things like that, your arteries get clogged up, you need a way to... Yeah, that's another and... component of... It's not when you're just, talking about immortality. Yeah, because I don't want to have to be immortal and vegan. I'd like to pick one or the <laughs> other, please. <laughs> uh, I mean, eventually we'll come to the point where you don't need to worry about being vegan because all the meat's oh, grown God. in a lab anyway. I'm okay with that, Like, we're actually. not farming actual cows. We're farming I mean, I'm cells o- that replicate themselves in a jar. I mean, I'm okay with that mostly because I think by the time I reach that, most of the people that I know who make their living as farmers will be dead. So, like, it's not going to, like, harm them. Because that's my well, main concern, too, with this. Because it's like, if we reach to the point where, oh, well, all our meat's grown in the lab, what do we need farmers for? We don't. Yeah, so well, what's gonna this, this to goes into a whole other discussion where when you're talking about a post-scarcity society and entering the stages of a post-scarcity mm-hmm. society, if anybody's familiar with Hello Internet, I'm pulling some of this from there. But you you need to start talking about people as unemployable, not unemployed. Like we're getting to the point where so many jobs are going to be automated or made obsolete that we just can't employ everyone. And you need to start realizing, instead of having this stigma where like, oh, well, I don't have a job anymore. It's We need to find a way to help these people that aren't able to work. Because like, like imagine with AI and cars. Like when we start having self-driving cars, you're going to have an incredibly large workforce of taxi drivers, food delivery, truck drivers being dramatically downsized. It's the same thing with something like that, where it's like all these farmers that are currently making their living with this, they're going to become unemployable. Like they're, they're, there's not enough jobs to replace these people's jobs. So we need to find a way to support those people because we're going into a society where no one is going to have to work. And to an extent, like we've almost reached that with some farmers in a way already. Like most of the stuff you're getting at the grocery store is not coming from like, you know, the mom and pop farm down the street. It's coming from mega farmers. Yeah, like, it's economies of scale. It's when you can get yeah. these huge machines and the new technology, you're going to be able to corner the market in that. Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that that is truly unfortunate because like for some people it's really hurting how they're able to survive to the point where they can't anymore. Yeah, but the answer to that is not to prevent people from advancing technology. The answer is to support these people who are facing the negative side effects of this technology, not just technology bad. So it's not return to monkey. Yeah. <laughs> no, go back. I wish to be monkey. <laughs> Yeah, you you like the idea of immortality as almost natural, like more natural than what I kind of see happening a little quicker is the going back to last episode, which is the altered carbon type tech where you're cloning your consciousness and your consciousness lives on in tech yeah but that's not you anymore then. so so here comes the great debate i think you're talking about greater leaps than we're talking about so really all we need for our generation to be immortal is to have a steady incremental gain in healthcare and gene editing and taking care of those yeah. things because you don't need to you know discover the way to emulate a brain or do some sort of black box. So what, what do they call it? Uh, They're called cortical stacks. Cortical stacks. Most of them just call them stacks. Right. You don't need somebody to just like have a eureka moment and bam, they got a, you know, a stack, yeah, stack they've invented or something like that. You just need better treatments and cures for things that already ail us along with possibly some gene editing shenanigans and things like that. 
to say extend the average lifespan 10 years and then 10 years later do it again and again and then one time it takes five years and you've extended people's lives 30 years and if you can keep a rate like that and then suddenly it's a race essentially see the whole reason i think that the stack method or the what we'll call the um black box for humans (laughs) uh, the reason i think the black box is going to become we're going to see the black box first i don't think it's going to be the premiere i think i think we will see the black box first just because i think when you start talking about gene editing and gene sequencing People kind of get like a, like a, a, not like a voodoo vibe, but like they're just like, they're a little hesitant because so much can, I feel like so much more can go wrong with gene editing. Like say you're going, okay, well, I'm going to try and increase this person's lifespan by 10 years. But They've edited the genes and now all of a sudden we have an amorphous blob. That's not what they're doing though. <laughs> like that we're not at that point, especially with CRISPR. Like we've already successfully... As far as we're able to tell right now, ended, been able to modify the genes in a way that we were able to end degenerative diseases, which means we almost have the end of senescence in our grasp. We are almost at that stage already. There, I, I forget exactly what the diseases were. I don't remember if it was Parkinson's or Lou Gehrig's disease, but they were actually able to stop. Again, I don't know if those are actually the right diseases. I, I should have checked. I wasn't prepared for this. Next disclaimer should be, we are not experts yes. and or doctors. Yeah. Don't take anything we um, say. Given a little bit of time, I could come up with the exact names. Do your own but research. They were essentially kids. able to stop and reverse the effects of degenerative really? diseases. Hmm. Where, so, where, where did you see that? It was a where? medical journal online somewhere. I, I, I've, this is something so, I'm very interested. In. Uh, yeah, no, I, I know you're. That's why we're talking so about. So you it. think yeah. there's more of a stigma for better? Uh, I think I'll call it more... healthcare for elderly people than no, it, than I, there I, is about people putting <clears throat> chips in their brains. People no. don't want chips in their arms. Okay, that's yeah, why they're afraid vac- get vaccines. Yeah, very, I, they're afraid vaccines are going to give them microchips. You think someone's going to want a black box in their body? Well, okay, the people who don't want vaccines, I'm sure, also don't want you messing with their genetics, like because vaccines do that too. Yeah, like. There's what I'm saying is I feel I'm not saying I'm against like the CRISPR tech. I'm just saying my personal opinion, which I know is a dangerous sentence to start, is that I feel like we will get to the black box quicker than perfecting the genetics. But I will say that if you can perfect genetics as a form of immortal life, then that will be the premiere. Like, that, that is what we will get to. I think the black box might bridge the gap till we get uh, there. See, I feel We're like already the almost black, there, though. I feel like the... We're way farther away from understanding the human brain than we are from understanding the human genome. Yeah, I was going to say, because you got to not only be able to understand the human brain perfectly and be able to map everything, but you need to be able to emulate or simulate that on a computer, more Which or less. we don't even know is if it's possible yet. Mm. We know it's theoretically possible, but th- that might require computing power we just don't have. And we can't. It might be impossible to miniaturize that kind of computing power. Mm, yeah, I, I, can, I can see what you mean. You, you are most likely correct. <laughs> um, and my biggest problem with, like, the black box, like, oh, you have a backup of you, is that's not you. It's this- a copy of you. Once you're dead, you're dead. Like and this is where Soma was a, a fantastic game. Yeah, and I think it. it you guys it are gonna have to clue me in on that. Perfectly. Right, so sh- well, no, you can't. We can't. We can't. This is gonna be the huge spoiler warnings for yeah. Soma. Well, okay. To be fair, like pause it here. Go play the game. Go up. Markiplier did a <laughs> great a fantastic playthrough. playthrough. Yes, um, don't go play the game. Just watch somebody else play the game. Yes, because I actually enjoy game, it better. Like sometimes because it's especially with games like that where it's just a story. It's more, I can engross myself in the story more if I don't have to worry about the gameplay. Plus, there were, like, there were points of the game where, like, you could get stuck for, like, no reason simply because it's such a story-driven game that it's, like, if you're not, if you're not one to play strictly story-driven games, like, you know, you will be bored. That's why watching it as a medium of entertainment rather than playing it is almost better. Okay, so like what is for, the, the premise? How does it so you want to explain you, it or should I? I can, I can explain it since it kind of supports my point even... It definitely supports my way of thinking a lot better. Well, okay. So okay. essentially you have a database that is you. 
I guess I would call it. Oh, so you're not you're just explaining like the the, the shot. I was gonna explain like the game itself. So like, nah, I just really need. To, I just want to know kind of how this is gonna relate and what. what yeah. Is the, well, I think giving a little bit this? of backstory to explain why it's good for your point also helps. Um. Yeah, I was gonna talk about like your fact that you're stuck in an underwater base. <laughs> but, <laughs> so and you're going to die. Yeah. So. Just to, I'll start where the game starts and then I'll let you take over. The game starts with this guy goes in for some sort of medical treatment and he gets put into a, he gets put into a chair, they wrap something around his head and they're recording his brain waves because he was in a car crash or something. They're essentially making a copy of him. What they did was they made a copy of him and then all of a sudden he wakes up somewhere he's never been before. And he has no recollection of how he got there or where it was. So it's like you waking up Saturday morning after the night drinking? <laughs> no, because I can at least feel the regret afterwards. <laughs> I actually forgot about that. Yeah. That so, so yeah, you wake up and you're you're somewhere you've never been before. And your whole goal is like the, the base is like self-destructing. There's some like weird stuff going on. It's not so much that it's self-destructing. So like the, it's, yeah, the base is itself, relevant to that. Yeah, well, the base itself has somehow gained sentience I through its AI. I thought there was some AI. kind of monster or something outside. Yeah, the monster outside is the sentient AI. Oh, Self-replicating. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, this part's irrelevant. Though. Yeah, so this we'll, part we'll is irrelevant. To, we'll cut to the chases. So essentially, you're, you, have, you realize you have this, like, they device... Called it the they called it the Ark. That they're trying to get to? Is that what it is? So, the Ark... Well, that's, been, I'm not even at that point yet. I'm just talking about the thing that you actually use to... What you be- so you get to a point where you need to go through a locked door that you physically can't travel past. But what you can do is sit in this chair. Oh, that part. Okay. And when you sit in the chair, you your conscious gets transferred as a copy. As well, it's sold as your conscious is getting transferred. And when you wake up in that other body, you hear you screaming and banging on the door in the other room. Huh. And, like, you finally, you may, like, th- that, that's, tr- that's towards the end. That's the kind of, like, spoiler part. But it's essentially what really, when it comes to terms of, like, copying your conscious is you're not, you, you can't transfer consciousness. No? Your, your brain isn't, like, some operating system His, that you can just kind of extract, extract the data, yes. put that it would in be some my, other you, brain. Yeah. I don't think you can take, you would huh. have to take the whole physical brain. Really? <laughs> Brain transplants. Because anything else is just a copy. Like, unless... And that's what he doesn't like. That's what Unless you at. can prove that it is one continuous stream of consciousness and you cannot resuscitate that consciousness in the original body, all you're doing is making a copy of yourself. And that's what makes the ending of Soma so powerful. So the over... The whole thing for Soma is the Earth has become, like non-livable due to global warming so instead of going to space humanity went into the sea and we're living in bubbles in the ocean but the problem was it wasn't getting any better underwater so they had developed the tech to transfer everyone's consciousness into this arc and they were going to shoot this this capsule the arc Mm -hmm. into space so that people can live forever in the arc as consciousness which is basically Eden or heaven or whatever. You know, there there's some biblical references, but that's yeah, not I think super Eden's important. actually well, purgatory it is a or different game. Game. Yeah, yeah, Eden's a different game. <laughs> but um so the main climax of the game is you get to the Gauss cannon that is going to launch this arc out of the ocean, mm-hmm. which you're in like the Marianas Trench. Yeah, I think you're yeah, and, something like that. And like you were shooting it from the Marianas Trench trench into space to perpetually orbit the sun because the arc is run off of solar. Okay. And so the climax of the game is you launch this arc and you and your sidekick, which is another consciousness in like your iPad or whatever the hell it is yeah. that you carry around. You as the person, I can't remember the dude's name or the sidekick's name. He's like, all right, what next? And the sidekick goes, what do you mean what next? We did it. And he has, like, it, it is the ultimate existential fear because it's like, what do you mean we did it? I'm not on the arc. And the psychic goes, yeah, you are. You uploaded your consciousness. You're good. You're there. Mm. 
So the huge ju juxtaposition is, yes, there is a copy of you on this arc that is living a lovely, happy life. Meanwhile, your shitty construct is stuck at the bottom of the ocean in the Marianas Trench while this entire lab is falling apart being ripped to shreds by... I think you do kill the monster before that happens. I don't remember. But if you don't, the monster is still coming after you. So there's a copy of you that is living in immense fear and anger. Actually, several at that point. Yeah, because there are a couple. And, like, you get to a point in the game where it's almost more merciful to shut down robots. Because there there are people's consciousness stuck in these robots. Yeah. they They don't know what's going on. And they they have no clue, and you explain it to them, and it it just destroys them as a person stuck in a machine. And so, like some like it, it's a game that can move you to cry. Yeah, it's a very it's a very good game. Yeah, it's absolutely a great. Unfortunately, game. anybody who's reached this point, hopefully, you paused when I told you to and played the game and played the not, game or watched someone play the yeah. game. It, it is it is a trip. Even if we did spoil it a little bit. Oh, well, not a little bit. Even if we spoiled it a lot, it's still super worth the watch or the play. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying because you're cloning your consciousness, the the uh, you that got away and survived isn't you. Correct. And I, I understand where you're coming from, and I would probably agree with that, but that's... But you're not, you're not going to hold a position like you wouldn't press the button to launch it? No, or, okay, no. Okay. I wouldn't not launch it. Okay. I, like... <laughs> I probably wouldn't copy myself onto it. Okay. You would rather just suffer? Either way, you're suffering, though. That's the whole Yeah, point. but at least there's a part of you that's not suffering. It's not a part of you. It's, it's a, copy. a copy of you. I mean... It's like you're giving... It's All you're doing is like, life. okay, so do you want to create a new human on this arc? My answer is... Well, you don't want to have kids me. either. Yeah. Well, uh, like, for me, the answer is yes, because, like... It, it's me, but in a way, it's kind of like my kid. I, I think that's like an argument, too. It's like, it, I want to have kids, which are basically just a edited version of your consciousness, in a way. So if I, you really want to look at this it like arc, that. The copy of you wakes up, and it's like, oh, it was just a bad dream. Or, well, no, the copy wakes up and thinks it successfully made it onto the yes. arc. Uh, okay. So, in a way, but yes, yeah, you there's... do make it onto the arc, but there's a part of you that... No. No, you don't make it onto the arc. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, original, don't make it onto the arc. Copy that's all you. I care about, Gary. Yes, yeah, yes, but how do you know it. you're we... not already in that situation? You're on some sort of arc-like device now, and the original you is trapped okay, on yes. a base somewhere. And it gets back to the point of, that's irrelevant, because the only stream of consciousness I care about is this stream of consciousness. So how uncomfortable would you be if you found out life was a simulation? I wouldn't care. Really? Yeah. Wait, what difference does it make, I feel Gary? like with the this odds argument, that you care. No. No. The, uh, you're missing the point. Am I missing the <laughs> point? This stream of consciousness doesn't care if I cre if like... So if this con stream of consciousness ends, I don't care if there's another copy of this stream of consciousness existing that's what the point is irrelevant so you don't care if you're not the original is yeah i don't care if i'm not the okay. original and i don't care about any future copies okay like pressing the button to make a copy is the same as not pressing the button to make a copy like i don't care either way i wouldn't be like i wouldn't be like oh man i created a copy of myself on the arc but i also wouldn't be like oh man i missed the opportunity to create a copy of myself I feel like you that would be different if you were put into that situation though. No, because like this it goes back to a fundamental belief is I don't care about any stream of consciousness other than this one. So it would really suck if he found out he was a clone, is what I'm hearing. No, no you are no, 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 totally a... misunderstanding this point. Okay, no, all right, now I get you. Sorry, brain. Fart. He doesn't care if he's the duplicate that's not supposed to exist. Right. No, not not even not supposed to exist. You know, like you're supposed to clone yourself it's, and then destroy the original. And like, but like something went wrong, and so no, now both oh of you my are God, there. You guys, I feel like you guys are misconstruing my point. It's no, we're not, not like I don't have I don't have a hatred for the cop. Well, there is a little bit of jealousy, but okay, that is fair. I can understand that. Th like that is part of it, but also. I don't see like the need to create a cut. Like if like if my life is going to come to an end and this stream of consciousness is over, it doesn't benefit me in any way by creating a copy of myself. Not even if that means you might live for another 200 years. But I wouldn't. 
Okay. Yes. The stream of consciousness yes, your is stream over. Of, but to everyone else. I don't care about would, anyone I, else. No, but just so to everyone else, though, they would think you're. They still would think alive, I'm still alive. Right? Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. If. I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't be like, no, I'm not pressing the button. But I'm like, it's that future is meaningless to me. So, like, if there was so I guess the, the, the foundation I'm trying to build here is if there was any downside, any amount of cost to creating a copy of yourself, I would not do it. If the cost was reduced to functionally zero, then, yeah, there's no point in not doing it. I, I So you wouldn't mind if you're fitted with some sort of stack thing that copied you and then there was some version of you that lived on after you were say hit by a car and killed if there was if no there was downside no, say it yeah. was ha- say it happened when you were you know whatever seven years old you don't even yeah i wouldn't care boom you know It'd the decision was made for yeah, you yeah so i wouldn't like tear it yeah, out and be and like there can't be any future <laughs> yeah. me's but and like that's and that's getting to the thing like it's it's become like a government mandate that you needed to be stacked yeah and even like whether or not you're neo-catholic well, I just like think you, you become stacked. I just think it's a pointless endeavor. Is all I th- is all I'm saying. Like, is it a pointless endeavor or is it I? Because I think I don't know. Well, at that point, all you're doing is creating an AI that resembles someone who once lived. Yeah, I, I guess I, I am kind of leaning more towards your point of view as we've been talking about this several times. Like, because yeah. originally I was like, yeah, I have no re- like, yeah, I would totally transfer my consciousness. And whatever, see, that, but see, I, I, I was honestly blo- more in the camp of, oh, that's me. But yeah, you're I making mean, me definitely reconsider. I'm, I'm in that. that camp. Like, think too. about, like, think about this. So you have this is a more. I feel like what would be considered more of a realistic situation is you're sat down in a chair, and you're told your your physical body is going to be destroyed by this process, but they're creating a copy of you that will live on forever in this artificial land. I would absolutely not do that because really? what you're doing is you're prematurely ending your stream of consciousness to create a new consciousness. Now, for something like that, though, I can see that being beneficial for people who are terminally ill or at the end of their life, like through natural means. Again, yeah, well, well, you're Again, do, what, you're, case, what you're saying there is you're reducing the cost to nearly zero. You're basically writing yourself your, your own autobiography by preserving a version of yourself. Yeah. And that's case, what I'm talking about. You, like, but. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You're reducing. Like, if you're already going to die in a week, I would argue I would do it at the last possible second. Well, yeah. If I was going to do it, if you're about to flatline, you slap that button. Yeah, like there's no. You're you're what you're doing by what you're doing by changing the argument is reducing the cost of the action. That's that's understandable. Like, my whole thing yeah. is I don't have I don't have the qualm of. The two, con- like the consciousness, and then the copy of the consciousness. I don't have that qualm. I would, I would get the stack again. I'm also, I'm not saying I wouldn't. He just wouldn't consider the him that survives the to still be deadly right, a- yeah. accident. Right, right. That's and and that's what I'm saying. Like I would still consider that to be he, me, even if it's not. So really I guess me. it's you like it's, in the cosmic sense. It, it's not you the in the literal sense, but, but it's not, not you in the, in the functional sense. Right. He like, would consider himself to have died a true death. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you were dead. Like you would you consider that me, was copy. Yeah. I would argue that any time you die subsequent to that, you're not actually dying then. Because your consciousness is then contained in that, is it not? So it's only contained so they have like most, cloud backups, right? The rich people do. So if your stack is destroyed, they call that RDing, real death. Because you can't come back from an RD unless you have... So does the stack repopulate a brain then? Which then the brain beco- resumes normal function and starts saving information to the stack? It's it's kind of weird because when you get the stack, right? You get the stack and it's you. And it takes in memories that your brain makes, but also like muscle memory of your sleeve. So the reason why it's weird for mercenaries in the books is because they're constantly jumping sleeves because they're being sent off world to fight. So you might be on one planet this day, but you know, the next day you're being shot like three light years and you're now in a different sleeve. Oh my God. This is like but the you worst maintain, of both worlds. But then. you maintain some of your muscle memory just in a different so yeah, sleeve. So the consciousness isn't maintained in the stack. So every time no, you're you go copied, to sleep, you're basically. dying. Yes. 
It's it's that the is long the sleeve. worst. What you would want to try to do is make the stack the actual consciousness. So at least then you only suffer one real death, and then the consciousness. But the remains. thing is, it's not like suffering. Like it, you're okay. Sorry, you die once, and then the consciousness until that gets destroyed. You then have one continuous. I mean, strength. I will say that the Alter Carbon book does open up with this mer- mercenary getting lit up like a fucking Christmas tree with bullets. Like, he just gets demolished. And he wakes up, like, 200 years later. Someone has... He was also a terrorist, but that's neither here nor there. And he's, like, now being used as a private investigator. It kind of goes more into the life of being sleeved and unsleeved as a merc in the second book, which I think is called Woken Furies. A great book series. Um, I really enjoy it. I gotta finish the second one. So I have somewhere to go with so, this. So the way, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, why don't you get into it and I'll... Yeah. So, again, so the stack, if it's a separate clone, whatever, clone copy, whatever, it's not you and whatever. But what if, right, it was... Well, I guess it is integrated into your brain because it's sending information. Oh, yeah, that was the one thing I but wanted... Think of it, what, any... if it, what if you think of it like a second brain? That, so you can simultaneously occupy both. And then one is destroyed. So here's what makes it worse. Is that like, uh, you know, think so of it like having two hearts, right? You lose one heart, you, you but start you're getting still into weird. But say, you know, whatever. So you lose your brain, but your stack is in, is and your consciousness is batteries. <laughs> retained because it's because you're technically think of it like a like doubling your brain capacity is what you know or something like that, right? You're. It, it, <laughs> I don't think that's. Poss- you or can't. growing yourself into a giant brain, and then you would have to. It would have to be like once the stack's implanted, all consciousness goes through the stack first. Like your stack becomes your consciousness. It would almost have to replace your brain mm-hmm. because you can't have two two consciousnesses. It, what you it, like in what you're saying? No, one consciousness and two brains. Well, that, the thing is, you can I would the, argue that's just two separate streams. In the book, you can have um, two consciousnesses. So, here's... So, in the book, it's super illegal because you're essentially making a copy of yourself that is unregulated. And it happens... It happens mostly by black market people who want to ensure that even if one of them gets RD'd, one of them still survives. And so there's at a point where you can have two people, but only one ha- only one is allowed on the planet at any given moment in time. So if there is a copy of you, it describes in the book how it goes mostly is if you were going on vacation, you don't travel there. You go to a booth. They hook you up. Your, your conscious gets beamed to a different stack. They destroy the previous stack and... Then you beam it back, and you, like, that's how you go on vacation. This goes into a whole, this goes into the but, teleporter. Dilemma. And then here's the here's the other thing, though, too. As if having these stacks weren't bad enough, you maintain some things for the sleeve that you're put in. So, for example, Kovach, he gets beamed into a, uh, a person's body. The person had a wicked nicotine addiction. Smoked cigarettes like a fucking chimney. He maintained that addiction in the new sleeve, even though previously he didn't smoke cigarettes. Well, it's a chemical dependency in that case. Right. But then, once he gets beamed out of that, he remembers the dependency. So it's written to his stack. So... And he ends up then smoking. It, it sounds like it is what you're talking about, which I would say you don't... What You, what you might have the illusion of one consciousness... I, Occupying two brains, but I, what I would argue you actually have is two streams that don't deviate. They're well, what about a stream that, for I guess lack of a better way to phrase it, is acts remotely? So, like, you're basically switching to different bodies, but you can do that at will. And if they're destroyed, they're like uh, almost like drones, right? So, you say you have. Yeah. Whatever. You're some sort of. Uh, you have a stack, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's connected to the cloud or whatever. And you have if your you're body. Rich yeah, right? So you got your body, you're moving around, get shot in the head, boom, you're dead. Oh, shit, I better cut to my other body. and then Yeah, that's a better reality. <laughs> but that's not how... But that's, that's not, not the same the, thing. Yeah, yeah that's not you're how talking about something different, works, yeah. fortunately, because that was the better way to do it. Because that's just make basically 
having your brain be in some like super Fort Knox safe place. Yeah, and then, like, exactly. Well, there. and that's the thing. I think they all they are called fortresses, um, where these super rich people keep their their consciousness, which is beamed. You like the 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 frequency of which you have your consciousness beamed directly correlates to how freaking expensive it is to have it beamed like. Every 24 hours, it costs, like, $5 million every time. So, you do the math. That's a lot of money. It's something that these ritzy people, the haves, do just because they can, because they want to live forever. Now, what really sucks is for poor people who... There are, like, state-run insurance plans where if you were to die wrongful death, you know, car accident, you know, mostly accidents and stuff, they will basically refund your life and give you a new sleeve but what's the most heartbreaking about it at least in the book talks about it but you can see it in the netflix series the best is as kovach is going through you know he's just been resleeved so he has to go through you know the mandatory you know hey you've just been resleeved here's what you can do in your new sleeve don't do this that's illegal blah 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 and he's done it so many times that it's like a misnomer for him but it's a formality but as he's leaving the place where he gets re-sleeved, he sees a family and they're crying around this old woman, like 60 years old, looks like they used to do drugs. And they're crying and the old woman's going, mommy, mommy, what happened? The person that they received into that 60-year-old woman's body was a 7-year-old who got hit by a truck. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the, this is where you get into and like, the, the family, dystopians. Like, if we get to yes. this point in technology, this is not no, how no, any of no, this is No, this is, is going not to how anyone wants to happen. But like, that is definitely something that could happen that would really not be okay. Like, like how are you able to just essentially commandeer people's? But like, how do you yes. get that body? Then? Yes. So it's also a form of prison because if you are found to have um, committed a crime. They don't send you physically to a prison. They decommission your stack for however long you you have been sentenced to. Oh, that's so stupid. Though. So for <laughs> so for example, Kovach, the reason he was getting shot up with bullets was because he was a terrorist. So they decommissioned his stack for two hundred years, and since he didn't really have a plan, since he was a terrorist, he just never got resleeved. And then, like fifty years after that, he got resleeved for a private usage. Because that's the other thing, too. You can rent people stacks for things. Yeah, this is this is just, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic, honestly, it's a great book it, to read. Yeah, it breaks down You would some, like it. Yeah, so I the guess only, after, yeah. The only qualm I have with the book series are the unnecessary sex scenes that are just way too graphic. I used to listen to the books while I was working. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> it was, like, 9 o'clock in the morning, and I'm uh, on a riding mower, and this just disgusting graphic sex scene comes on. I'm like, Whoa! All right, I'm awake now. Yikes! I wasn't expecting that first thing in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, I guess to your point, I'm okay with copying myself. I wouldn't do it like the teleporter thing, where it's a one way. Your original self is getting vaporized or destroyed in the process. Which is the teleporter? Would paradox. not go for it. Um, What's the teleporter paradox? We'll, we'll I'm okay with after. the idea. No, no, no. Let's. I'm okay with the teleporter idea, right? So if I'm going to scan my brain, body, whatever, right. and then send that information at light speed or whatever, say, across the galaxy to reassemble a copy of myself on mm -hmm. the other side. I'm all for that, as long as it's not destroying the original me. That That's is, the yes, idea. that is the, yeah, but in, in... Because in, like, the Star the Trek The argument comes from Star Trek, where you get dematerialized and rematerialized. Yeah, no, in my, to me, it's mm. functionally the same as just stepping into a, a copier for people. Yeah. The advantage is I can send a copy of myself farther away than I could realistically get to. Yeah, which it, that just comes to the point where it's like if you want to have a copy of yourself instead of just having a robot do the same I'm thing. I'm for the idea of stacks, have a copy of myself, have like a cloud backup so that if the real me gets murked, I still have another other me's. I'm all well, for it. You're right. Am I 100% convinced that that's actually me? No, not really. Um, if, you, if you don't have the time to read the book, which I think... So I listened to it on Audible. Please sponsor us. Um, 
I think it was like a 20 hour read time. I can't listen on Well, yeah, like for, for me I have to actually have the Right, right. Book. So so that's so but that's <laughs> I get like distracted a, too. He's like, well, right, but that's like a reasonable so it'll take you like 20 hours to read so you can divvy that. If you don't have 20 hours to read a book like you can't divide that. Netflix did a pretty decent adaptation of the first book in the first season of Altered Carbon. I do believe it is still up. Even though they canceled the series, mm. there are two seasons. First season's great. Second season sucks. Because the first season, it really captures the neo-noir feel of the book. You know, I, I kind of talked about why I would like to see more noir films here the other night. Just because I like that genre. I like that gritty, you know, black and white, like, ugh. It's been eight years since my partner died. Like I, I um, like. Have you watched Markiplier's Wilfred Warstash? the the one where he's being interviewed by the detective? Yes, I think so. The, god, the whole who killed Markiplier? Yeah. Oh so god, that was so long ago. How many years ago was that? Now? Uh, several years. Ago. Yeah, but like I, I like that. I like that genre. Uh, these cyberpunk motifs show up, and they fit perfectly into this genre. And that's how you get the neo noir, or some call it cyber noir. The same thing with Blade Runner. You guys haven't seen Blade Runner. Seen it. You read the it. book. I think we both did in I have school. Not read you it's, read it. You uh, don't remember. Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Oh, that's the book? Yeah, There's that's the book. I don't even realize that. Yes. So, and there's a reason for it. it. The Blade Runner movie separates a lot from the book. And I have not taken, I have not blotted out my schedule to watch the Blade Runner 2049. And I think I told you guys why. It's a five-hour runtime movie. Jeez. Yeah. Five-hour movie? Yes. Why? I That's don't know. Insane. I mean, like, I, I like long movies. But... Yeah, I like long <laughs> movies, too. Don't get me wrong. But five hours. I feel bad for the people who went to see this in theaters. Split it into two movies. Call it part one and part someone, two. Someone took, someone took a potential suitor on a date to go see that movie and did not realize that it was going to be five hours long. Just get, like, a hard cut. Just like halfway through the movie, and just have it like, like end, end of part one, and yeah. no, just end abruptly. No outro, no or credits or anything. Yeah. <laughs> God, that yeah, one sucks. Like, yeah, geez. no, like Blade Run, like the first Blade Runner movie with um Harris Harrison Ford is great. I like that movie, but I want to know what like without reading like the synopsis of the five hour film because who has that kind of time? What did they do in the sequel? Like. In the first Blade Runner film, the guy, like, he's playing Deckard, who is searching for replicants. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen Blade Runner, which is, like, a 20-year-old yeah, movie. Which neither of us, neither have, of us seen, have seen. But you read the book, so you know what happens. I barely remember the book, to be honest. I don't no, think I actually read I it. Either. Wanna, I want right. to... All right. I <laughs> We're already off topic here. I, I won't talk... Fine, then. I won't talk about it, because we need to watch that film. Okay, that is a good. We'll save that for a future episode. But yeah, (laughs) I I like I like noir films, and I like the neo noir and the cyber noir genres because like noir is a genre that kind of died in like the forties and fifties, as it should (laughs) have. But why? Why should it's a it's the it's the genre of mystery that's not like it's realistic mystery. It's not like you know. It's not like these mystery movies that are more like horror films or like Super psychological contrived. thrillers. I, well, I guess the argument is, is market factors, obviously. Well, yeah, that, I mean, to, like that's why Westerns if they were died. still popular, they'd still be making them. Well, I think it's hard to make good ones anymore. the The last good noir film for me, anyway, was probably The Game. Never heard of it. Yeah, you're getting into territory that we're just yeah. That's like, that's not... fine. People who have seen the game and know what I'm talking about will recognize. But I don't. I struggle to even call that a noir. That's just more like a thriller. I don't know. Like it's so hard because there have not been, at least to my understanding. Maybe I just got to look into it. There haven't been good modern day noir films because it's it it it's it's the classic whodunit story, mm-hmm. you know. Femme fatales and gritty PIs. They and... still have movies like that. It... <laughs> but not in like the stereotypical way, which is, I know, cheesy and corny, but I like it. <laughs> I'll try to rein us in a little bit more, Gary. So we were trying to get into the morality of living forever <laughs> or something like that, right? Because you, you, you feel differently than the, the two of us in yeah. that 
living for hundreds and hundreds of years. Is it moral? That Well, that turns into a discussion based off of possibly religion and spirituality. No, it doesn't. No, well, it, it, that plays a factor, but there are a lot more considerations well, than I, just religion I and spirituality. Well, yeah. so, I said some of it. Not, like, some of it is going to be centered around it. Not all of it, obviously, because not everyone yeah. in the world is. No, so part of the morality argument is if immortality, like, the, the main thing for me is if immortality is possible, A, will it be expensive? No. Yeah, that's eventually, the whole. eventually. Well, no. Again, post scarcity society. All right. Assuming it's not a post scarcity society, a, dump that yeah. out the window. It's, it's it's normal society. But that's a real like that's all technology. You like back in the day. You remember how expensive f- old phones were? Like yes. nobody could afford phones. So we're not going to say, oh, it's immoral to have a phone because only some people can afford it. I, but this also loops back to the argument we we're making in the first episode, where are we going to reach post scarcity society before or after? finding immortality. I would argue we will find immortality before we reach as opposed to scarcity society. Which yeah. is which is okay. So with that probably in mind, not unrealistic considering right, so we're keep almost that in there. mind. Before we reach the post scarcity society we find immortality, right? That's the that's the sure. theoretical we're going on. In that case, will it be expensive? Probably, probably. Okay. to begin with. Okay. But, probably to begin with. Now just follow with me on the train of thought. If it is expensive to begin with, should we allow people to buy it? Yes. Of course. So you then allow all the people who are rich enough to afford these immortality treatments to live forever. Meanwhile, the poor live a sad, miserable existence and die. You're right. No one should be able to get treatment for cancer either. I was gonna I was gonna bring up a similar thing with the electronic heart we're talking about for the oh, yeah. Yeah. previous episode. The, the whole fact that healthcare not being something that people can afford is a whole separate issue. Yeah, it's a separate but, issue. But like that's already the kind of system where like some things are just expensive to live. Right, like we and don't deny people scientific advancement just because some people can't afford it. But what if this isn't so immortality? What if it's not looked at as like how do I describe this without sounding like I'm a classist? Um, it's not a human right. Like, is that well, <laughs> it's not it, more like it's an elective. Like, so we don't give elective surgeries to people who can't afford them. Okay. Mostly in the cosmetic field, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't have breast implants if you can't put food on the table. We're not going to do that. So, if it's immortality and it's super expensive and they're like, hey, we don't really feel like we should just be handing this out until we can make it affordable for everyone, do you still allow that to go to market as something that the cream of the crop can get similar to how people who can, who money is not... An option can just get like plastic surgery. Yes. So like let that. me propose that's the, how you the, fund future development of the technology the to make it solution. more affordable. Let's start with that. All right. The obvious solution, Gary, is you're selling potentially unlimited life. Right? Right. 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 So let's think of it this way I will pay for you to have whatever care it is that will make you live forever. Right? Okay. And then you're in my debt. I don't like I knew that's where this was going. Money. And I but didn't you like have it. potentially thousands of so years or longer Aaron to Aaron has it just off. made me a slave. No, <laughs> you know, it's like it's a mortgage indica- on your house. I would say it's like indentured more... servitude, but um a slave. <laughs> or wait, it would be more it would whatever, be more but... like a loan. It's not <laughs> more like a loan. But here, here's the thing. This, is... genetic, this isn't going to be an expense that you're talking like millions of dollars. It's going to be on more on the scale of breast implants. Like <laughs> uh, <laughs> when but, you can liken immortality to breast implants, yeah, you may so have it's, it's a very, I, I could be completely like you said we're not experts. I yeah. could be completely wrong. But like as far as the gene editing required for CRISPR, it's not like. A ridiculous technology. It's like there's not a lot of raw. The, the, see, the problem is like raw materials and manpower are what makes a lot of elective surgeries expensive. But there's also the fact that everyone is unique. So doesn't that make their gene editing, you know, unique to them? No, the solution would. It's not. Again, this isn't requiring. You, at the end of senescence. It's not genetic modification. Is, you're not like, modifying their genome. You're. 
finding a way to correct the breakdown of their genetics. Okay. So you were talking about the telomeres breaking Yeah, off shorting telomeres. just being able to repair, like, DNA damage and stuff that happens. But isn't that still things. unique to the individual? No. All humans share the same problem. Like, all... Like, the reason... That, that's why we've already been able to fix this. They're, the treatment was developed and can fix these diseases. Just across the board. Yeah. It's okay. not like you have to develop a regimen for each person. It's okay. We're able to correct the problems with these diseases. But yes. In your pessimistic old world style thinking, yes, you could do some sort of like mortgage on your life, oh, I God, guess. That sounds that's weird, ter- right? But that's, that's, that that's is a, terrifying. That's a fun it's way no to phrase different, it. It's no different than a mortgage on your house. That, like everybody needs housing to live. Well, right. Which goes like, into the argument of like, okay, well, like, how housing works. But like we were already in a system where that's acceptable. I don't think it would be that far-fetched to be you get a treatment and you just take a loan out and it's the loans are sponsored by but then what happens if you can't pay that loan back what do you mean assuming like you take this mortgage out on your life and you fall on hard times and now you cannot pay that back you have all the time in the world to pay it back would be my way of thinking so and it. then right? so then where <laughs> But you have all the time in the world to pay it back. What's stopping someone from just being like, I'm not paying this back. Are you crazy? Then you just default on it. Yeah. So do they repossess your life? <laughs> no, but <laughs> you can already default. Like, we live in a system where you can already default on large debts. I can go to the hospital, rack up $100,000 in whatever, life-saving surgery. And not pay a dime. Uh, they're not. They're not going to. The hospital's not going to send hitmen no, after yeah. me. To, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kind of reminds me of uh, like the yes, movie it's not repo. a. It's not an ideal situation, but like, if push comes to shove, we have systems that are similar to this that I think could handle. And, yeah. yeah, and again, I don't know exactly what the cost is going to be, but this is something. This is something insure. And again, you probably wouldn't need to even take a more like a mortgage like loan out because this is something insurance companies would want. Mm-hmm. They would not mind. It would not surprise me if healthcare insurance companies were, were would cover the cost of these procedures because then they could they theoretically would, keep the, the their payouts you. would drop dramatically because you're ending a lot of diseases by eradicating aging. Yeah, it really changes the game. A lot of healthcare would be like, oh, you got in a car accident, broke your arm, you need that taken care of. Yeah, so not is, oh, your heart is literally deteriorating. Yeah. You're 80 years old, you know, your skin's all bruised and, you know, you need yeah. constant medication. Healed. Like, they don't have to pay for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's, again, like the mortgage, I don't think that's how it would go. It would not be a very good system for the, exactly what you're saying, but yeah. it is a, it could be a possibility. And again, it's not like this is going to happen overnight, presumably. Well, I mean, you, you never know fully. Again, we're not experts, but it's going to be a slower incremental progress type yeah thing, so and yeah, like, like you were saying with like taking five years to add five years or taking five years to add mm-hmm. 10 years to your life yeah. and like that's so the reason i brought up the moral argument and all that is because in the article it talks about how if it is expensive and not everyone can afford it do we allow do we allow people to get it if they can pay for it? Not along the lines of a la mortgage or loan. Like if you can, like, like if Elon Musk said, make me immortal and he <laughs> threw cash at him and he got the treatment and now Muskie's immortal. Is that moral to allow people who are uber rich and already have everything in the world to live forever? I would treat it like we treat the vaccine nowadays, where the government will pay for everyone to get it. Or right, but the, some the, derivative the article that. the if, article wasn't taking that into account. No, I know. I, but it was just it was just just looking at that as a standalone case, not taking all of this else into account. I would argue it would be immoral to have the ability to make people live forever and deny someone who is willing to foot whatever the cost is. And I think that's what the article ended up getting Because what you're essentially doing is saying, because we don't have a feasible way to get it to everyone, we're going to force you to die. Right, which is where I think the article eventually Yeah, 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 I don't know. I, I treat it like insulin, like... It's something that can be made for relatively cheap compared to the benefit mm-hmm. of giving it, right? And I, I just, I, I don't see, it's not like we're diverting 30% of the Earth's entire resources to making one vial for one person. Well, right? and it's also like, 
It's like whatever he wants to do. It's an uber tax on the rich. Because like you're saying, of course, a lot of rich people are going to do it. You can charge them exorbitant amounts to then fund development or even fund programs that allow other people to get it. Be like, hey, okay, your net worth is several trillion dollars. You have to give us a trillion dollars and cover the treatment for like this many people who wouldn't pay that cost. Evil billionaires. Yeah, then they don't get the treatment yeah. though. That's the whole thing. Is yeah, like you have a lot people. of leverage on these people. Yeah. Yeah. It would be more, no, it would be more immoral if you have like uh, like I said, if it's developed privately and they keep it on wraps and don't let certain people have it or yes, you know, that would if be you have like a monopoly on some sort of which I can in this see case, that have happening to be like a super too. Serum There's thing. already a lot of different companies that are working toward like if they, mm-hmm. this is it, it, at least right now it's very much a project that like humanity is working together to get this thing done. Mm-hmm. We're not in an evil dystopian world where like one God, mega corp we were <laughs> one, one mega corp is coming up with all the technology. It's not like Johnny Mnemonic where you have this. <laughs> company who is feeding your life also destroying your life like and has the cure for the black shakes the cure for the disease they're causing the more likely and or relevant issue would be the short time span where we have limited production capacity and we can't provide it for to everybody is who is getting it first kind of deal right like okay we're going to make this the biggest project the globe has ever worked on right we're going to try to get everyone this process but obviously it's going to take some finite amount of time whether it's six months or 10 years or whatever and so that whole time you have some people being we'll say inoculated or whatever being treated right Mm -hmm. uh maybe you do it like the vaccine where you take high risk groups or people that are already on death's door so Mm -hmm. to speak or maybe you have some other dystopian way of providing you know (laughs) providing it to people or maybe you do a random lottery and say that's fair yeah but like you have some time window where some people are going to get it and some people are not just due to that logistical rollout and you know but again, that really that situation really only happens if you have some sort of magic serum pill that'll like fix everything currently wrong with you and whatever. Again, we're talking I, more gradual. So. Yeah, and I don't think it's ever gonna be into the form of, you know, this this magic shot pill elixir mm-hmm. thing like that. It's gonna be like a treatment regimen. I like like Jonathan was saying, like it may take you five years of getting this treatment regimen, mm-hmm. but that's going to, you know, make it work you're going to live for another 10 years and then after 10 years of this regimen you might have 30 years on your life and after 30 years of this regimen you might have 100 years like Mm -hmm. that is more likely going to be the case but again for me i just there's a part of me that doesn't want that well it's not true in mortality you got to remember right so we're curing what would we would normally refer to as natural causes of death right which you know, that's maybe not the best classification in general. But Yeah. So you're they're... still going to be able to die from, say, getting construction shot in accidents, head. getting shot, getting in a car accident, having a building collapse on you. You know, you should still die through these normal, you know, accidental means or what, intentional. Or intentional means, we're talking yeah. about hitmen, but. <laughs> yeah, getting murked. <laughs> but suddenly you don't have people dying, quote unquote, naturally. Yeah, and I guess we do have to make it clear, like, there is no, I don't think there is a way to reach immortality where no one will die for any reason, period. There will be a reason for people dying, whether it's being, like, murked on the sidewalk by, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, loan sharks and shit like that, or a anvil falling on your head because you live in the Acme world. Yeah, and eventually people are going to want to die, too, presumably. Like, apparently not you two. Oh, that's, but that's not (laughs) a No, that's not even, no, that's not even what I'm saying. It's... So you're misconstruing my argument here. Well, uh, well. Before we get into this, why don't we sign off and we'll cover it a little bit more next time if okay. we decide to. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Gotta have a bloopers. <laughs>